so, so this is an example of what we, what we like to call social infrastructure, the idea that infrastructure can have positive social and environmental side effects. Um, almost the opposite, if, if, the, if a bridge can turn into a, an art museum upside down, uh, the opposite could also be true. Um, a project that uh, we did in exactly the same space of time as, as Vancouver uh, is a project for a small art museum and a sculpture park in, uh, in Norway. And, and we could basically place there's uh, sculptures on either side of a river. There's an old historical mill. And we could place the museum anywhere we wanted. Um, and in the end, our proposal was to turn it into the bridge that turns the entire complex of parks on either side into one single uh, loop. Uh, the museum has two galleries, uh, one daylit galleries with views over the water, and one sort of more vertical, more in, uh, enclosed gallery. Um, the transition from one to the other uh, becomes this kind of distortion, uh, a 90 degree rotation. And, um, and from, this, from the starting point, we had this idea that, that the museum could be seen as maybe one of the bigger sculptures in the sculpture park. Um, of course, once we started getting more intimate with how to make it span, it's a 250 foot span. So a pretty mature uh, column free, uh, free span. The, the cross sections are incredibly rational, like a series of rotated uh, rectangles. Um, so here you see the, the kind of raw structure. But the raw structure had some kind of a, um, because it is a bit of a, of a mission to make a, a building as a span 250 feet over a river. So it had this kind of Eiffel Tower aesthetic that, that wasn't really what we were looking for. Uh, and it looked maybe more sort of muscular than than the kind of effortlessness that we had fantasized about. Um, so we tried to imagine how, how could we um, finish the building. Uh, and, uh, and in the end, the, the idea became this kind of very simple idea of taking a lot of completely standard uh, elements, um, standard uh, uh, aluminum profiles on the outside, standard wooden sticks on the inside, uh, and just basically shift them ever so slightly. So it's, in a way, an incredibly traditional, conventional kind of uh, structure. Uh, in, in the joinery of the, of the wood, we also resolve all of the necessary technical installations. This is the almost finished building. Um, and, and, and like very classic kind of Norwegian wood carpentry uh, that ends up creating uh, this kind of very, very precise uh, complex geometry, sort of a hyperbolic uh, paraboloid, uh, as the as the as the floor turns into the to the wall, it, it reveals a, a gap that becomes also the the ventilation, uh, the sprinkling, the the light installations, the security, everything that makes it a contemporary art museum is is also integrated in this kind of very rectilinear logic. So even though you see curves. Uh, and arches everywhere, every single element in the building is, uh, is completely straight. So, so somehow, like in a way, trying to hack the kind of conventional, traditional uh, building techniques that are available to create something, uh, let's call it extraordinary out of the ordinary. And here you see how the, the skylight zips and, and turns uh, the more vertical part of the building into a completely introverted, and here you have this kind of spectacular view over the, the river and the mill. And on the outside, again, it's like this is basically um, this kind of extruded aluminum facade that you put outside um, thermal warehouses. So in a way, the most conventional, traditional kind of barn, uh, but again, uh, put together in a way that it describes this kind of uh, acrobatic uh, geometry. And then, then so of course, now, the irony is that I think we spent the same amount of time on, on this building as we did on the, on the power plant. Uh, and it also just shows how, how undiscriminating you are as an architect with, with what you actually devote your, your time to, uh, trying to make uh, a building, uh, a, a, a small art gallery float over a river, or trying to uh, turn a power plant into a, a ski slope. Um, also, uh, of course, from the other side, it has this kind of even more abstract sort of sculptural quality that really makes it 
uh, like one of the sculptures in the, in the sculpture park. Underneath, you can see the only other room, apart from the main sort of Kunsthaus space, is uh, the toilets. Um, the client was obsessed uh, with the toilets. Uh, so, uh, so basically, you, you enter below the belly of the bridge. So it's, you see the steel structure ending and the foundations. Uh, um, this kind of uh, glass stair uh, that takes you down. You can see the sort of where the bridge meets uh, the foundation. There's this kind of uh, expansion gap. Um, Elmkane and Draxet, the, the Danish-Norwegian uh, artist group, created this kind of voyeuristic uh, sculpture uh, looking into the toilets. Uh, and when you look over his shoulder, you actually look at the belly of the, uh, of the beast uh, with the reflections of the water uh, underneath it. Uh, and as you continue down uh, underneath the glass stair, you actually have the, the actual bathrooms. The glass stair it has a projections by Tony Orsler that makes you feel that you're actually listening to conversations happening inside the, the, the toilets. And, and when you think you're finally going to be left in peace uh, inside the stall, you actually have uh, these classic Orsler uh, installations uh, whispering in your ear uh, as you're trying to complete the mission. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, so essentially, the, um, let's say another example of like, let's say at least this kind of idea of social infrastructure that, that one thing can also be the other, that something cultural can also be infrastructural and, uh, and vice versa.